Hey, thanks again for joining us. This is uh, John McBride with Rocky Mountain Underground Systems. Uh, we're going to go a little bit about, about the um, uh, Thunder Tiger Ghost, taking a look at uh, the initial um, setup. We have the Thunder Tiger all put together. Um, the Ghost is ready to go. We have landing gear assembled, our batteries installed. A couple of things about the radio system as we go through is to make sure that we have mode 2 selected if you are a mode 2 flyer like I am. Uh, making sure our switches are pushed away before turning on the ship and as well as the landing gear is in the off position. So we want to make sure that that's how the radio is ready to go before turning on the ship. When we're actually ready to turn on the ship. We can do a quick touch to find out where our battery status is. Each one of the LEDs is approximately 10%, so 10, 20, 30, and it goes all the way around. So you can just do a quick touch and see where the battery is at and you can do a touch and then hold down to actually turn the ship on. Turn the ship off. So first we want to go ahead and turn on our radio system. And prepare the ship. Press once, hold it down. Right here we'll see a series of uh, LEDs flashing uh, yellow and red. This is just the IMU slash uh, flight controller warming up, getting uh, stabilized. As soon as that's ready to go, it has changed to green with a few reds there, meaning that it is searching for satellites. Green being that we are in GPS or auto hovering. So it will be, as soon as it grabs onto GPS there, it will actually stop the green, uh, the red, following red LEDs to uh, indicate that it's got uh, enough satellites to hold a GPS position. But we can test our landing gear here by flipping the switch. So those are functioning correctly. That way we have good communication with the bird, we know it's actually talking, we can flip switches and move things around, but for right now, that's how we, we want the bird to look when we move on to the next part. Okay, so in order to do any setting changes, gain changes, calibration setups, anything like that, we're going to use a mobile device. Currently we're using an Android device to uh, uh, set up our settings, but first we want to initially connect to the ship. So internally it has a Wi-Fi connection inside, so we're going to connect to the ship via the application. And on all of the Thunder Tiger Ghost units, they have a SSID number right here. That would be your network that you're connecting to and a password associated with that. So before actually opening the app, which is which where you can download from Thunder Tiger's website, the TTR Hero app, we're going to go right into our Wi-Fi settings. Click our wireless Wi-Fi and click on that. We're going to wait for that particular ship to show up. So we are looking for, on this bird, 11457. And we have the 11457 right there. I'm going to click on that asking for the password which is 23502 2 see that 3 5 0 and 2 hit connect it should show that we are indeed connected to the Wi-Fi so before opening your application, you want to make sure that you are first initially connected the, to the ship via Wi-Fi and it's actually ready to go. So we can come back out of there, return to the home, and up here we're going to open our TTR app. So up on the top here we can see that the uh, Wi-Fi is connected to TTR. NL11457. If it shows anything else in here besides your ship, then you'll have to redo your Wi Fi connection.
All right, so we've gone ahead and got connected to the actual ship via Wi-Fi. Um, first, we're gonna go through and kind of take a look at some of the uh, apps that we, or some of the settings that we have within the application itself. So the beginning here, we have our uh, flight information. At the top, it shows exactly that we're connected to the TTR NL11457. If we click on the flight information board, it shows um, a bunch of uh, uh, satellites, the attitude, distance, how far, it has a bunch of information that is outlaid right there. We as well have some functions going on that when you pull the switch and change, you can see the manual attitude, back attitude, all of those things going on there too. We come up to our settings, we can come into settings going back to the main page here or from the flight information page hitting on the settings button. So as we're on the settings button, we can see roll sensitivity, pinch sensitivities, and these, these numbers showing up as zero. So since the application doesn't have the information from the, from the ship yet, we'll go ahead and press the get button. It loads in all of the information that's currently stored on the flight controller. And if we want to change those, so we're going to change the percentage of the battery to 15%, change the max speed to four. After making any of those kinds of changes on this screen, we want to hit the send button. It'll then save those items to the actual ship. Uh, those will then be good. So if we go into, this is our, again, some of the quick, quick uh, settings that we can do. If we go into advanced setting up here, we have again a whole bunch of information. If we hit the get button, loads in information if it was there. If we need to change any of this information, change the different types, the vehicle, everything else in there, we can do that. It's defaulted on mode two. We want to make sure that is there. So all of that stuff that we can change if we need to, we can send it, we, can, we need to get it, we need to change it, we need to send it, and if we need to change it back to default, we can do so. It'll change it back to default, then send it back to the machine. Well, let's go into the next part, which would be our the magnetic compass calibration. Let's click on that and get started. Okay, so what we want to go to is the settings page. We want to hit on advanced settings to magnetic compass calibration. At the beginning, it talks about the horizontal alignment, so we want to choose the horizontal alignment first. When we click on that and click OK, the light status on the ship actually turns green. So as we show right here, it shows green LED. We're going to pick up the ship. Easiest way I had found is actually to rotate the ship around in a circle, but not myself. So like the DJI ones, we, you can actually just do this a couple of times, but on this, we want to do this at least five times around a circle. It gives as much information as we need. So if we unlevel the ship at any time during the process, the light will extinguish. So we want to try to keep this as level as possible when doing this first alignment, this first uh, calibration, and that status light will, will show us that the ship is staying level during the process. One, there's two, there's three, four, and five. What we want to do is come back up to the magnetic compass calibration again. And now we have vertical alignment now being able to be chosen. So we're going to do vertical alignment. And our status light on the back, as soon as we choose that, goes out. The idea is to pick up the ship, and as soon as we rotate forward, the LED will turn red. That same thing. We want to keep that as level as possible during the calibration so that the ship can get as much information as it can. So we want to keep that nice and level. So here we go. Just one, two, three, four, and five. We go back again to magnetic compass calibration and we have save alignment. So as soon as we hit the save alignment and press OK, we'll see it uploading some numbers here right there, the XY calibration sign. ZY is coming in.
And what you see here is a graphic of circles represented right there. So one is the vertical alignment, the other one is the horizontal alignment. The better we can get those circles around in, 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 with each other, um, the better the calibration is. Okay, for this next part, we'll try to do a uh, transmitter calibration. So if we come up to our application, we are in the advanced settings page. So advanced settings, do a transmitter calibration. And on the video or on our screen here, it says adjust transmitter. When we press OK, it will turn red, collect all the stuff. This is flashing through into the corners and all the way around. And if you've done it correctly, the LEDs will turn back to standard LEDs and that red bar of indication will go away. So if we do that one more time, transmitter calibration, adjust. You see the red bar comes up, it says please go into all corners, into all corners. As soon as the red bar turns away, the red light will go back to, to there. And then we can go ahead and check and make sure that we actually did it right. Start into the corners to start the ship. Zero throttle to stop. Okay, so on the, um, through the settings page here, we're gonna talk about the last uh, item. And that would be this going into our advanced uh, settings, our installation guide. In the installation guide, it will pop you through since the uh, Hero flight controller is not only for the Ghost, they sell those as separate items in, and use the same application. We have the installation guide you can go through that actually starts a uh, initial setup for uh, quads that are using the Hero flight controller. So with the Ghost, we don't really need to go into that, change it, or do any of those things. So best to just kind of stay out of that area. Thanks again for watching the videos that we just made in setting up the uh, Thunder Tiger Ghost to get ready to fly. So we've got our ship ready to go, application connected, all the settings ready to happen, and our remote. So let's go out and take it out.